Hello, good day to all of you. Today we will talk about how you can use Pi Mongo with Azure Cosmos DB. Before that, we'll start understanding what all things you need to really work on the Pi Mongo. So first of all, you need Python to be downloaded and installed. That's what I have done already in my machine. So if I go inside this um, command prompt and I just say that um, check the version of the Python. So if I say Py, if that comes, then that means I have that Python kind of installed. So let me try to say that I want to increase the size of the command prompt and then it's say pi and you can see that python is installed that's all right uh second thing is that you need to make sure that pip is installed so to check whether um, the pip is installed generally in version 3 onwards pip is by default installed but let me just check that minus m pip Dash, dash version so if i check with that it will show you that pip version 20.2.3 is available to run uh, pip in python you can either use pip if the if the path is set so if you see that if it is not recognizable don't worry either you can go and add the path or you can say python or pi dash m and then say pip install and the thing you need, the library you need is PyMongo. So you say PyMongo, right? So that basically will, will install the, the Python Mongo component. So you can see that um, it is successfully installed the version 3.11. We are all set here. Now I need to go into, let's say, the code. So first of all, let me create a folder um let's say documents i create a new folder and i then try to open the code here now the code opens right so let me it opens in that same folder so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to go ahead and create a file say demo.py that's the name of the file now just to check if my python is working fine uh, and also it is prompting me to install a couple of um extensions which are important right so this if you use python with visual studio code you should be using this python extension provided by microsoft that hell gives you a lot of uh, quick uh, capability but without that also it is fine that you can continue working on that so if i use the simple python command like print hello and you see that if this is running fine in my local terminal so if i go into the terminal and say new terminal and that opens the same folder. So let's say it opens the same location. So the pylint let this pylint install. That also one of the things which we'll talk about the various different uh, syntactical thing which you if you have that. So let me clear the screen and then say pi and then say demo dot pi. That's in the case. So hello is time working which means that my Python is now fine. Now what I can do now I to work against this uh, Python, right? So what I need basically is, let me see that if I can want Just wanted to increase a little bit so that it's better visible. So you can see that now 
I need to install uh, import the Py Mongo. So I say import Py Mongo and then I start using it. Now one of the first thing I need is that I need to initialize the Py Mongo and its component called Py Mongo Client. So I'll say my client, right? And then I'll say Py Mongo dot Mongo client. Right, so you can see that a little bit of help is coming up, and that Mongo client will take some connection string. We'll come back to that later. Assume that we have the connection string now, then I need a DB. So I'll say my DB equals to my client, and then you pass on the database name. Now, Mongo database starts with a database, and then inside the database, you have collection. Think of it like a database and table, but it, collection is not exactly the table as you can imagine, but think of that way. So I'll say hrdb, that's the name of the database, so it has to be created, pre-created. And then I say my collection, the name of the my collection comes from my DB. So this is hierarchical. So you start with um, client, then you create the DB from the client, and then you uh, access the collection from the DB, right? So you just use this curly braces, give the name of the database. So let's say I create a collection called books. I already have that collection, I'll show you that. And then once everything is done, now you need to first insert the record. So to insert the record, all right? So what do you need to do? You need to, so insert the record, you need to, build some JSON. So let me build an object called book. That's the, the entry. And then I start building the JSON object, right? So to do that, I use this, right? And then I start providing the, the thing like um, book ID equals to 100, right? And then I say title, So it has to be co covered by the double code. So I'll say title equals to a uh, tale of, uh, not just um, some book. And then I just say author is some author. Okay, you can just also give the first name, last name kind of thing. So the book object is created. Now I use the my collection object, that's my call. And then I say that add or insert one. So you can have multiple record inserted one by one through an array, or you can say insert one. If you say insert one, you pass on the book object. That's what the book recites. And then once this is done, you can also read them to see how, whether the record has been added or not, or you can use some tool to really go inside the, the Python, uh, the Mongo database, uh, I, either by using Mongo Atlas or the Visual Studio extension and see whether you have that um, record available. But let us use, let's say, uh, uh, way to read these records. So to read, we can use literally something called find. Uh, if I use find, what happens? I find based on a condition, right? So if I say for book one, I'll say be in books, be in my collection. That's from my collection. And then what do I need to find? I need to find all. So if you do not pass anything inside the find, it means that it's gonna find you all. And then you print all of them one by one. You can also find the, the newly inserted record by capturing what is the ID it has used. And then you can print that. So both, both the way are fine. So if I have to run this, I just need to run the same thing and it will not work because Right now, I do not have the connection string. So let's see how we can add the connection string. So I go into my Azure subscription. 
I have one of I have the Cosmos DB created. So I go to let's say Cosmos database. And then I've used a free tier because this is only for demo. So you can see that this is a free tier. And I created this Cosmos DB which supports Mongo API. So when you create that, you need to tell that what API you need to support. Do you need to support Cassandra? Do you need to support Mongo? Do you need to support document? That is a SQL API or the table, right? So the key value pair. And if I go to the connection string, I get to see all the connection strings here, right? So I'm not gonna use any one of them. So what I'm gonna use is that I'm gonna use the connection string over here, which is already copied. So you can find the connection string from the Azure subscription. So you don't need to um, run any command to do that. So it's all written there. So you have that full connection string available now. Now, if I try to run this code, you notice here at the below, where I'm running this code in the terminal window, right? If I just say that now, it's gonna try to connect if everything is fine. And then it's gonna add the record. Now you can see that a record called this will be added, right? So right now I have only one book. So if I take you to the Cosmos DB, which I am running at this point in time, and I go to the data explorer, and you have got a something called HRDB, and then there is a collection called books, right? And then inside the books, you have documents. Um, that's where your uh, records are being stored. And you can see that right now I have only one record. That is this one. Now, if I add one more record, like I just change, let's say change the sum book to two and this one to, let's say one and some author to two. And then I run the same piece of code it's going to add one more record and then the fetch or the find will get you to our results, right? So you can see that I'm, I'm showing up here. Uh, I have got two results. So if I now go over here and let's say um, refresh this, maybe hold, refresh the whole page and just see whether it is now showing the updated version. Right, so if I go to the HRDB, books, documents, then I should be able to see now two records. Number one with book, some book, some author, and number two is some book, some author two. Right, so you'll find uh, this two records right now available in them. So this is a very simple uh, approach of re literally um, installing the Mongo, PyMongo library. Uh, with your Python installation uh, in the developer box using uh, the Visual Studio um, code to write simple piece of application which can connect to the Mongo database and then insert the record and find all of them. And next, we will see how we can um, retrieve the record in many different ways, uh, use the filter option, and then uh, do a little bit of deletion and updation as well.